What is going on guys, Joey Suggs here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel if you're new here and welcome to another garage gym video. And I have gotten something in this something right here that has absolutely changed the way that I'm able to work out in my garage. I've been using this for the past few weeks. I'm ready to give my overall review. And by this, I mean the RipFit M1 all-in-one universal trainer. So let's sit down, let's go. people so here it is right behind me and um, I've had this thing like I said for about three weeks now using it every single day I have not been to my commercial gym for the past three weeks so I feel like I have a really really good understanding of the pros the cons and overall thoughts on the machine um, and that's what I'm gonna give you in the most concise way I can possibly think of doing it now by the way RipFit did send this out for me to review for you guys it's not gonna change my opinion on how I review this thing, but I do wanna make that known, and that also means I'm able to offer you guys a discount code if you do decide to go pick this up. Uh, there is a link down below. You can use my code and it'll save you money off your order. So it's kind of a win-win scenario for both of us. So broad overview, specs, and points. Um, what this aims to be is uh, all-in-one budget universal trainer. So you have uh, a rack to do all your main compound movements like squats and bench press and stuff like that. Uh, you have a Smith machine to do those movements a little safer and the added benefit of having the guide rods. Um, you have two separate pulley systems, two separate cable systems as your functional trainer. And you have your storage system in the back for all of your things that hang, as well as your plates in the back as well. Uh, also a pull-up bar. So overall dimensions, it's about 85 inches tall, 68 inches wide. I believe that is including the Smith Machine bar that sticks out. Uh, and the depth is right about 80 inches, I think 79 to be exact. Which for me has been one of the most compact all-in-one trainers I've seen on the market. The frame is all 14 gauge steel. It uses two by two uh, uprights in all the posts. And the front posts have 12 one inch holes for your main accessories for your barbells and stuff. And then it also has 15 holes, smaller holes on the inside for you to lock in your functional trainer cables. Uh, up top, like I mentioned, multi-grip pull-up bar. And then right behind that, you have your linear bearing Smith machine bar with your safety stoppers. And then right behind the Smith machine, you have two dual horn plate loaded two to one cable pulleys for your functional trainer. And then on the very back, you have storage up above over top for some of the accessories that you use for the functional trainer. You also have some holes in the middle to store some of your main post accessories. And then behind it, you also have uh, storage for your weight plates. And even if you don't purchase this with a bundle, it still comes with all the accessories you need for your barbell and things like that. It also comes with your pull down accessory. It also comes with a landmine accessory and a low row foot plate accessory, all included in that non bundled price, which that non bundled price comes out to, I think it's uh, $1,100 or $1,200 before a discount code, but you can also use the discount code in the link down below. That'll help me out slightly, but it also will give you, I think, $200 off. Um, so it comes out to right around $1,000 all in, which is really, really cheap. I think that might actually be the cheapest all-in-one functional trainer with two separate pulley systems and a Smith machine on the market. All right, so there's your general specs, dimensions, everything like that. Let's talk about this thing. Let's get in depth on everything about it. Um, first things first, let's start with the setup, okay? The shipping time, not too bad at all. I think it was like a week and a half for everything to get here. Um, the setup itself, uh, it was a decent lengthy process. It's the first time I've ever built anything like this complex. Not that it was all that complex, uh, but it did take me about four hours total. Um, messed up a couple times. The instructions were pretty solid though. And uh, one thing I will say that the instructions didn't mention is the shoehorns on the cable pulley system, they're slightly angled up, right? So if you don't install them angled up, 
they'll be slightly angled down. I initially had them slightly angled down and my weights kept falling off. So definitely make sure you install them facing up slightly. So worth mentioning also, uh, I was missing a few pieces I think got lost in shipping. Not all of this ships loose. So the pieces that were shipped that had been assembled already, like these top members up here that have the rollers in them, uh, were missing some screws and bolts. Um, but I just reached out to the RipFit team and they they got it over pretty quickly to me. But hopefully that's something they get sorted out as they ship more of these units out. I believe I was like one of the first people to get it. Set up all around, not too bad. And within one long afternoon, I was using my new piece of machinery. All right, let's go over some pros and cons of each individual aspect of this machine. And now while I'm going over these pros and cons, I think it's important to keep in mind what RipFit is, in my mind, going for here. Um, and that's to offer everything it possibly can in a budget-friendly way that makes it more accessible to more people. So with that in mind, let's go over everything on the rack from front to back. So as just a barbell rack to do your squats, your deadlift, and things like that, everything functions very, very easily and as it should. Um, I won't say the accessories are incredible incredible. I mean, they come pretty much free with the thing. They're just basic plastic with a metal base. They're not anything fancy, um, but they do their job. The rack itself is sturdy. I never once have uh, felt like it's going to tip one way or another, but it does still shake if I'm going to be like doing squats and like ramming into it, or if I can shake it like this, it's going to move, obviously. But at no point did I feel like it was unsafe in any way. I will say the two by two and 14 gauge is a bit of a con for me. I'd like to see a three by three with like 12 gauge. Obviously that's gonna be more expensive, um, but I think one would be a little beefier. It wouldn't shake as much uh, and more like aftermarket accessories are three by three. So that would be helpful as like you progress and use this thing and add more accessories to it. Now, like I said, it comes with 12 holes for your like main barbell accessories, and that's decent, um, but they could have added more. And I think if the machine was a little taller, like overall taller, they could have added a little more too. But all around, it definitely gets the job done. And the fact that it comes with the accessories, like a low row foot plate, uh, the landmine plate, I use those, that stuff a lot. So the fact that it comes with that for free, definitely a pro. So that kind of wraps up the rack portion of it. Um, as a pull-up bar, Honestly, it's too short for me to do pull-ups on. The overall dimensions are just too short for someone 6'4 to do pull-ups on. It does have a lot of different options to put your hands. I do like that. I thought that was well thought out. It also isn't knurled, which I know some people like, some people don't like. Um, so it's kind of hard to please everyone there. What I did was I just used some grip tape and wrapped it around and it works fine for me, but definitely worth pointing out. All right, and now on to the Smith machine, and this is where I start to feel like maybe things aren't super polished quite yet. So let me start out by saying this. It functions extremely well. It functions exactly how it should. You have a ton of range of motion going all the way up and all the way down. You get those nice safety spotters that have the uh, springs in them for a little bit better absorption, and it is extremely smooth to use. Um, one issue that I found with mine specifically, I don't know if this is a widespread thing or not, but one side of my Smith machine is, I would say, 10 pounds lighter than the other side. Uh, and I've tried literally jumping on it, like with all my weight plus weight on the opposite side of the bar to try and even that out. It's helped a little bit, but it's not quite perfect as far as evenly balanced across the bar, which is something you would want on a Smith machine. But the bar itself, uh, this is actually a pretty freaking wide bar, not quite like the full Olympic size bar, but it's a lot wider than other Smith machine bars that I've seen inside of a functional trainer. So that is really nice. You can get really wide on it. And the knurling on the bar is really good too, which is nice for having good grip, especially when you're having to rack and re-rack it. One thing that it doesn't have that I was kind of surprised it didn't have is a spot or a way to attach a leg press. I know for a fact RitFit has a Smith machine that has a leg press attachment, but for some reason it's not on this machine, which is kind of sad to see. I mean, I have a dedicated machine over here for a leg press, but if I can get it on this machine, that would be awesome, honestly. So that's the Smith machine. 
Let's move into probably my favorite part and the most important part, in my opinion, of this all-in-one trainer, and that is the cable system. So first of all, uh, let's just go over the difference between a plate-loaded versus a selectorized cable system. Your selectorized is what you probably are used to in your commercial gym. You have the weight stacks on the thing and you use your pin and you pick which weight you want and that's how you change your weight. This way of doing it is obviously going to be easier, uh, but it's going to be way, way more expensive to do it that way. Um, so obviously trying to focus on budget, they went with the plate loaded version of doing this, but they also made the cables two to one ratio, which I think is ideal for a functional trainer. Um, there are some functional trainers that are one to one. You don't get as much travel with the cable and it's harder to get those like precise weights as well. So let me start off with a really big pro. They are extremely, extremely smooth. The cables themselves, are as smooth, if not smoother, than any commercial gym I've been to. And they're also very tight, and there's multiple different ways to tighten them. You can tighten them at the carrier system, and you can tighten them where you load your plates on. So there's different ways to make sure it's always super tight, and that is really nice. Another pro, like I said, two to one ratio, that's what you want, but I would rather have a selectorized, honestly. I, I understand the price aspect of it, um, but having to add the weight on both sides, it doesn't have to be even, but I've noticed my workouts take about 20 minutes longer because I'm having to change the weight out more. Also, they use these like, they're like small metal pegs and then you put a plastic sleeve over it. And that plastic sleeve just doesn't seem very durable one. And they're kind of machined weird to where you can't butt the plate all the way up to it. And sometimes I need all the plates I can on that thing. So if you're not putting tons of weight on it, probably not gonna be a huge issue. But for me, I would rather have seen full metal pegs for the weights. And then a little bit on the positions, like I said, there's 15 different positions that you can put this uh, for your functional trainer. And they lock in really nicely. The uh, the carrier also like twists to lock if you wanna like make sure it's super tightened. And I do that quite often. Um, but I wish there were a few more. I wish there was like 20. And I think if the machine was a little bit taller, you could fit a little bit more, um, but it's also a little limited just by the design um, that you can't get all the way up on it. Uh, what I have noticed I'm able to do, I don't know if I should recommend this or not, but I don't put it actually in one of the holes. I put it all the way up and tighten it really tight and it holds just fine. If I'm doing like lat pull downs, I need it to be really high. That's been working really, really well for me. So the cables have been working very, very well. Uh, I just wish they were selectorized, which I understand why they're not. And I wish it was a little taller with a couple more holes for adjustments. All right, and now let's talk about uh, design and storage. Um, first of all, this thing is looks incredible. I mean, it is a beautiful machine. Everyone that walks by like as I'm working out is like, that thing is incredible. Like, it looks amazing, super, super well designed also super functional when it comes to being as compact as it is and having all the storage options being able to store all of your like pull down and like functional trainer accessories up top and that main stylized uh hanging bar works very very well and then right below that you have all your one inch holes to store all of your like actual rack accessories uh, it has holes at the bottoms if you want to add band pegs to certain things and it comes with those band pegs they really did think of everything one thing that i think is a little off that they didn't think of is the back storage so it has six storage pegs but for some reason the middle storage peg is like too high so i can't fit three bumper plates going all the way down i can fit one up top, one on the bottom, and then I can't even fit like a non bumper plate 45 in the middle. I have to use a 35. That's like the closest thing. They just would have moved the middle one down a few inches, like centered it. You'd be able to fit three bumper plates easily. So that was kind of a confusing point. Um, and also there is no bar storage. I'm sure you could probably get a bar storage uh, one inch pin and put it on the side if you wanted to, but it doesn't come with that like straight out of the box. Also briefly, I wanna talk about some of the stuff Riffit sent out besides just the machine itself. Uh, the bar you see behind me is from Riffit. 
It's a basic Olympic bar, but it's done very, very well. The knurling feels good. The bearings feel really nice. It's a nice bar, period. As you've seen in all the clips and the main video, they offer three kinds of plates. They offer your like rubber grip type plates. They offer bumper plates and they offer crumb plates. For me personally, the best thing I've seen on this machine that I've used on this machine is the rubber grip plates. They're one, just my favorite type of plate. I love the way they feel in the hand, um, but they're also really compact, more compact than the bumper plates and the crumb plates. If you like that kind of stuff for like deadlifting or squats or something like that, definitely pick those up. But for me, my favorite plates have been the rubber grip plates. Also, I need to mention the bundles. So you can buy this by itself. Like I said, I think it's 11 or $1,200, um, or you can get it with some of their premium attachments. I'm telling you, these premium like lap pull attachments are creme de la creme. Like they're better than any of the similar attachments I've used in a commercial gym. They feel, I mean, they feel incredible. Super, super high quality. Definitely, definitely recommend if you're thinking about getting one of the higher up bundles, go for the one that has the nicer grips. Game changer for sure. You can also get a bundle that has this bench that I've been sitting on this whole time. Super adjustable, it's, it's really quick to adjust too. Uh, the padding is nice. It's just an overall good bench. If you don't have a bench, you're gonna need one. So you might as well pick up this one with the new rack if that's something that you're looking at. So overall thoughts. For $1,000 if you use discount code, it's also available on Amazon, I think. I don't think anything even comes close for how much this can do very well, maybe not perfect, but very well, I don't think there's anything out there that's gonna be better for the money. Yes, things could be improved. Some of those things could be improved for cheap. Some of them could be improved, but would cost a lot to do so. And so I understand where they wanna be with this product, and that's to offer it to as many people as possible, really be able to offer more people a way to work out in their garage at home, for a low cost. So for me, I haven't been to my commercial gym for three weeks, probably won't be going back at all um, because of this machine right here. So I love it. Um, is it my perfect machine? No, and I'll tell you what I think my perfect machine is. So if possible, I would like the exact same footprint of this. This thing is super compact for an all-in-one universal trainer. I just wish it was six inches taller. If it was six inches taller, it would solve my pull-up problem, it would solve my attachments problem, uh, like getting up high enough on stuff, that would be perfect. Second, I want it to be beefier. I want it to be three by three posts. I want it to have more one inch holes. Uh, I want it to be a little more stable just for extra peace of mind, I guess. And if it had more adjustment holes for the functional trainer, that would be perfect. Now here comes a real wish list, and I know it's gonna be expensive if they do something like this. I want two separate 200 stack selectorized weights instead of the plate loaded. That would make my life so much easier. It would be so much nicer to just boop, boop, not have to worry about changing the weights from behind and moving weights around and all that kind of stuff. Um, I know it's expensive, but for me, it would be worth it 100% since I'm using this thing every single day. But definitely keep those two to one. And then now I'm getting a little out there, if possible, we add a third, that one can be plate loaded, one to one ratio for your lat pull down and low row maybe at the back or something like that. I'm just, I'm just spitballing here, just throwing it out there. And then top everything off, make it the perfect all-in-one machine. You add a leg press attachment to the Smith machine. And now if RIFIT made something like that, I would be the very first buyer lined up for it. That would be ideal. But for the meantime, this thing ain't going anywhere. This is exactly what I needed to really transform into being able to work out in my garage consistently. Um, so I'm super appreciative for RIFFIT for sending this thing out, letting me try it out. I'm in love with it, honestly. It does have its flaws, but for me, being able to work out at home, do my own thing in my own garage, in my own space, on my own time, is worth the world. So like I said, if you guys do want to pick this up, use the link down below. It will help me out a little bit. And it also helps you out too, because you're going to get a really good deal. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know what you'd like me to review next. I want to get some new equipment in here and I want to give you guys a full tour eventually as well. So leave a comment down below what you want to see next. 
but I will be seeing you shortly in the next one. Peace. This the anthem. If you rockin' with it, put your hands up. Yeah. This the anthem.